Hello and welcome to this mini course on code components in Framer. Code components are a way to extend the functionality of Framer. And you can see a bunch of really great examples of this on Framer.supply. All of these are made using code components. And this is exactly the sort of thing we're going to learn to do in this course. If you're a little bit confused about the differences between a code override and a code component, I have a, another free course on Framer Academy that talks about code overrides. And in the intro to that course, I talk a lot more about differences between the two. So if you're a little bit confused, I'd recommend watching that course or at least the first video before jumping into this one. Okay, so what are we gonna learn in this course? Well, we're gonna be building a code component of the course of four videos. And those videos will touch on the main concepts involved in Framer's code components. So this first video is a light intro to code components where we talk about the code environment, how to configure sizing options and how to think about styling. The next two videos are about property controls. You can think of property controls as hooks into Framer's UI that allow people to configure the components we build. So we'll start off with the basics of property controls and move on to the more advanced use cases. And then in the final video, we'll talk about how to use Framer Motion to add animation to your components. So before we get started, there'll be a link to this file with everything you need in it down below. Okay, so what are we going to build over the course of these few videos? We're going to be building this mask component and it allows us to add a gradient mask to its contents. So if I click on start mask here, you can see I can configure the direction of the mask and I can play with each of the points. I can also change it from image to component. And in that case, I can use it to mask something else on the canvas. So off to the right over here, I've actually got this color cycle component that Benjamin from Framer made. And I'm just gonna link it up like this. And I'm gonna set this to fit. And you can see it's masking this component. And we can basically use this mask component to mask anything, an image or a stack or a bunch of text. You can see over here how you might use it in practice. It's particularly useful for just sort of masking images or graphics in your web pages. You can see over here, I've hooked it up to this little mockup. You can also see that we can animate from a start mask to an end mask and apply a transition. So when I preview this, the mask gently animates down as the mark animates up. So it's a really useful little component and it's exactly the kind of thing you'd build with code components in Framer because it's pretty difficult to achieve this without a custom code component. Currently, there's no way to add gradient masks to elements in Framer. And so we're using a code component to extend Framer's functionality. Okay, so before we get started with this, let's create our first code component. So we're gonna go down here to code. You can see I've already got a bunch of files here. I'm just gonna hit the plus next to code and make sure that new component is selected. We don't want an override file, we want a component. And then make sure to give it a name. I'm gonna say my component and hit create. Framer will take you into this code environment. And by default, it populates this code component with a template. So on the left pane here, we have our React code. And then on the right, we have a live preview. And that means that while we edit the code on the left, we can see changes update on the right. Now we should talk a little bit about this default template that Framer gives us because it's a great example of all the things we're gonna be covering in this video series. If you've ever written any React code, some of this will be pretty familiar to you, but there are some things that are unique to Framer going on here. Let's run through it. So at the top, we have some imports. We're importing property controls from the Framer package, and we're importing motion from the Framer motion package. Now, because this is a React environment, you can import a lot of ESM packages straight from here and they'll just work, but there's no direct guarantee that anything will just work. So your mileage may vary. Next up, we have something that's quite unique to Framer. We have these annotations and they're used to configure the sizing options that will appear in the properties panel when people use your component. But we'll touch on those more in a second. Next up, we're exporting a default function called my component because that's the name we gave this component when we created it. And it's also the name of the asset that will appear in your project component tree. Now, this is just a normal sort of React component that returns a div, but you can see that this is a motion div, which means it's a frame a motion div. And this allows it to use these animate and while hover attributes that are specific to frame a motion. After our component, we have the add property controls function. And the first argument is actually our component. And the second argument is an object, 
with all the property controls we want to pass down to our component. So back on the canvas, if I just drag my component in here, you can see that there is one property control configured and it's called tint. And it basically just allows us to control the color of the square. If we hit this edit code button, it'll take us straight back. And we can see that tint is configured here as a property control. Now it's got a bunch of properties here, which we'll talk about in the next video. And last but not least, we have the box style, which is being spread into our div over here. And this is just where we're specifying the styles for our box. Now, there are a few quirks to writing styles in a framer code component, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in this video. Okay, so now that we've done a run through of everything going on in this template, let's talk about how to configure sizing for our code components. So as you can see, if you go to this URL, the way we configure the sizing available for our code components is by changing the value next to these two annotations. So right now, this is set to auto. And if we go back to the canvas, we can see that in the sizing panel, my component is set to auto width and auto height. And if I click on these, I have no other options. It's constrained to auto. And that basically means the height is being set by the contents of our code component. And we can see if we scroll down to the bottom that the width and height of our box is 125. So that's the thing that's controlling the size of this code component. Now, what if we wanted to allow the user to dictate the size of the component. Well, to do that, we have a couple of options, which we can see here on the documentation site. So actually there are sort of just three options because these two are variations of the same thing. So those options are auto, so allow the component to dictate its own size, fixed, in which case the user has to set the size manually, or any, in which case the user can pick any one of the sizing options available in the sizing panel. And then the last one is any prefer fixed, which is just any, but the default value will be set to fixed when people drag the component into the canvas. Okay, so let's just quickly play around with a couple of these. So if I change this to fixed, and I'll change this one to fixed too, and I press save, so I just hit command S there to save our changes. Go back to the canvas and let's drag in our component from scratch again. You can see that now it's defaulted to fixed and it has a default width and height of 200. Now we might actually want to change this default value. Now to do that, we just need to pop back to the documentation. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see that we can add two more annotations to specify the intrinsic size. So all we need to do is copy these over and head back to our component. And then we'll just copy them in here. And then I actually just wanna change the order. So width is always first. Okay, so now let's change this value. So it's something like 400 and 100. And now when I go back to the canvas and I add our component from scratch again, you can see that the intrinsic width when it's set to fixed is now 100 and the intrinsic height is now 400. Okay, so next up, let's try any. So if I just type in any over here to both width and height, press save and go back. Now when I drag in our component, you can see that it's set to auto by default, but when I click on these options, I can do sort of whatever I want. Okay, so the last option is basically the same and it's just any prefer fixed. And this means the user can configure any option, but it'll default to fixed. So now if I go back and let's add this component from scratch, you can see that the width is defaulting to auto, but the height is defaulting to fixed and it's using our intrinsic size that we specified. Okay, so that's pretty much it for styling, except for one little detail. Now to demonstrate this, I actually need to alter this a little bit. I'm gonna wrap this in a div. I'm just gonna say div and then close it over here. And I'm gonna give this a style and I'm gonna say background color and I'm gonna say red. And then I also just wanna remove this scale over here. So I'm just gonna comment that out. And I wanna remove the margin over here. And I'm gonna press save. And if we drag in our component, and I'm gonna set this width to fixed, notice that the red div that is wrapping our component is stretching to fill the width of our component, but it's not stretching to fill the height of our component. And this is a little bit annoying because I actually want the, because I actually want that red div to be the same as whatever I specify in the sizing panel. Now, the way to fix this is to go into our component. If you've ever written a React component before, you'll be familiar with the props parameter. And it's just a way of passing properties down into our component. And in fact, that's where the, that's where the property controls are being passed. You can see tint is being passed down through props. But Framer also passes down some styling information through this props object. So what we can do here is say style, and that'll pull the style object out of props. And then what we want to do is just spread it into our div. So we just need to say dot, 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 
style and then put a comma afterwards. And when I hit save, you can see that now it's filling up the full height of our container. And back in the canvas, you can see that the red div is taking up all of the space being provided by these sizing options. If I select fit, you can see it's still respecting the size of the box inside of it. Okay, so that's it for sizing. Next up, we need to talk about styling because the way we write styles in a frame a code component is a little bit unique. You can see down here in this comment that we write styles in object syntax. And that basically means we're writing CSS but without the CSS syntax. And a perfect example of it is right here on this border radius. In vanilla CSS, you would write border radius like this with a dash in between. And then you would specify the value, so you'd say 25 pixels, and you'd put a semicolon afterwards. But you can see that that's throwing an error, and that's because we need to write the styles as JavaScript objects. So whenever we have a CSS property, that would usually have a dash. What we do is remove the dash and then capitalize the next word. Uh, you can see the same sort of thing happening over here with background color, but you'll notice that this is still throwing an error. And that's because in object syntax, when we specify a value, it either has to be a number, like 25, and in this case, 25 will be interpreted as a pixel value by default, or we need to wrap this as a string, and then we can specify the unit like that. And then we just need to remove this semicolon over here, and we can comment out this one. So now you can see that that's behaving the same as it was before. But we can change the unit over here to be percent, which looks pretty similar, or we can say something like rem, and we can specify any CSS unit over here. So in essence, any CSS value that can't be represented as just a number needs to be a string. So for instance, if we wanted to give this a border, we would write border and then start a string, and then we would say, two pixels, solid green. And make sure to put a comma afterwards, hit save. And you can almost see that there's a green border around this circle. Now for the most part, writing CSS in object styles like this is actually pretty painless, but you might find yourselves wanting to do something along the lines of this. So, and hover, and then changing the background. Now, although that looks like it should work, you'll notice that when I hover over this, it definitely doesn't. And that's because one of the limitations of object syntax is that we can't easily write these pseudo selectors. Now, thankfully, we can use frame of motion to do something like while hover and then background red. And now when I hover over it, it matches the background, but we're still limited when we need to do stuff like media queries, for instance. There's no easy way to write responsive styles inside of Framer code components. So it's a limitation you need to be aware of. And essentially the way to get around it is allow the user to configure layout options through property controls, and then they can specify them differently on different breakpoints. Now, one thing you might've noticed is that there's two different ways to write the styles here. Up here on this div, I've written the styles inline. So I've specified the styles right on the style attribute, but over here, we're storing the styles in a variable. And basically you can write them however you like. And the reason for writing them in a variable like this is that we can reuse them. So if we needed a few of these, we could just duplicate this and they're all consuming the box style. And now if I wanted to change this to purple, they all inherit that change. So writing styles in objects like this, just ways to reuse them across different children. Okay, so that's it for this introduction to code components. We should feel comfortable with sizing and styling. In the next video, we're actually gonna start building our code component and we're gonna start to use property controls to do it. See you in the next one.